What we're going to discuss during this segment are the risk factors for a C. difficile infection. And I typically like to group these risk factors into three separate segments, demographics, medication exposures, and environment. From a demographical standpoint, any individual over the age of 65 is at increased risk for C. difficile. We believe this is a result of individuals over 65 having more medical comorbidities or more medical illnesses. In addition, individuals over 65 are more likely to receive the medications that reduce their immune system function and leave them susceptible to C. difficile infection. Female gender also is an increased risk factor for C. difficile, and this is consistent across the board for unclear reasons. Any sort of frank immune compromise, individuals with diabetes mellitus, individuals with human immunodeficiency virus, patients who have inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and those individuals with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are also more likely to receive other medications, specifically adalimumab, Humira, or infliximab, Remicade, that leave them more susceptible to C. difficile. Any individual who's had C. difficile in the past is also at risk for this infection. Any individual that has chronic kidney disease. From a medication standpoint, in other sections we discuss in detail why patients who receive antimicrobials are at increased risk for C. difficile. Basically, it's a weakening of the bacterial colonies in our gut that fight off C. difficile normally. Any individuals who receive acid suppressive medications such as proton pump inhibitors or histamine blockers are at increased risk. Individuals who receive chemotherapeutic agents are also at risk for this. And then finally, from an environmental standpoint, any individuals that live in a skilled nursing facility or spend significant amounts of time in the hospital. And it's clear that those individuals, firstly, are more susceptible because they're more likely to have medical comorbidities, but also in an environment where we're surrounded by other individuals who are susceptible to this or might get this infection, it's clear that somebody who doesn't have this already might be exposed more readily. By understanding these risk factors for C. difficile infection, we can pre prevent this infection by avoiding some of the risk factors or reducing these risk factors or discussing these factors with our healthcare provider to reduce our risk in the future.